Hey everybody, JJ here. You're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. All right, Bulls and Bears, it's Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Thank you for being here. Got a lot of financial economic news to get into. And I really do believe that we're at the beginning of financial crisis situation here in the United States and, and across much of the globe. But we're going to focus on the United States here. And what we're seeing is just unprecedented. We're seeing the call for completely getting rid of the debt ceiling. And if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what would, would really wake you up as to the extremity of what's really happening. Completely getting rid of the debt ceiling. So no vote, no second thoughts, just unlimited spending. So what does that tell you? Unlimited spending. They need unlimited spending to keep this monetary structure operational because I think we're at the, close to the end of the line if something like that doesn't happen. And we're approaching the point where it's going to be parabolic, parabolic debt, uh, kind of like a, a run up in a price of, let's say, a stock or some asset where you see the price just go straight up on a chart, straight up and down, straight vertical, uh, a parabolic move. That's what's happening with the debt and the spending. And a lot of people are saying, you know, this is the end game. Other people are saying that this can go on to infinity. Um, but whichever side of the, the view you're on, whichever view your is, uh, yours is, uh, we're truly in unprecedented times and it's just a very interesting time to be alive. So all of you out there that are in despair, that are uh, you know having a hard time right now financially, are struggling, uh, a lot of depression happening, a lot of people turning to, uh, to medications, you know, hang in there because uh, things can change in a flash. Let's take a look at a recent article. And also, quick side note, I apologize about my last video. The audio was really distorted, and I found out that when I used the camera, the volume levels were not set correctly. So I'm going to go back and tweak that when I come back with another face-to-face -face video using the camera. It'll sound much better. So thanks for coming back. Thanks for hanging in there. Well, let's take a look at what was said here out of Miss Yellen here, Grandma Yellen. Uh, she's again out there warning of a December 3rd deadline, but wait and see what happens. Um, credit markets could go into chaos, increase U.S. borrowing costs for an extended period, and damage U.S. credibility throughout the world. She's talking about the December 3rd deadline. And this article says she has no plan in place on how Congress will address the December 3rd deadline. If the Treasury does run out of cash, the U.S. would default on its financial obligations. Okay. All right. Now, here's the funny part. This came out Tuesday, November 16th. That was yesterday. A couple hours later, this was 12.18 p.m., 18 minutes after noon. Well, less than three hours later, 2.58 p.m., also yesterday, this article. Yellen extends to December 15th the date for potential debt default. And again, many people think this is a big nothing burger. Other people are saying that, hey, we need to pay close attention to this because the discussion of this debt ceiling is just a couple weeks at a time. So now they pushed it back again. Yellen's new date is 12 days later than December 3rd. She provided a letter to Congress back in October. You remember we reported on that. And that just passed a $480 billion increase in the debt limit as a stopgap measure. So do I think they're going to raise the debt ceiling? Of course, I think they will. But the fact that we're having to discuss such huge increases in spending should raise a lot of red flags. And if anyone thinks inflation is going to get better, if, if prices are going to come down uh, with this type of spending, you, know, you might want to think again and readjust your, uh, your expectations and your preparations on uh, what we're really headed into as a country. All right, let's talk about this article right here, again, out of Yahoo Finance. Inflation will plunge in 2022. Someone sent me this. This was, a, uh, this was put out there by Goldman Sachs, and it's not really as interesting as it sounds. Inflation will plunge. Well, they're not talking about prices falling. They're just talking about the, the rate of price increases will slow. So instead of a 4.3% inflation, they're talking about 3% inflation in June 2022. Now, we know those numbers are way off base because they don't include most things that people actually have to pay for, right? They just delete things out of the category of what they look at as far as seeing what inflation really is. If they looked at the true cost of living, fuel prices, home prices, rents, etc., then you would see numbers 
closer to 20%. And even higher in some categories, look at used cars, way over 20% year over year. But of course, they're not going to admit that when they give you the official numbers. Why do you think that is? Uh, consumers don't really seem too worried. Consumer spending jumps despite inflation surge. So people, we're in a really, really strange time right now. We have some people out there that are pulling back on their spending. They're being very cautious because they see what's happening with the economy. But then we have other people saying, if I don't buy now, prices are going to be even higher later, right? So it's a really, really strange time to be observing all this and to be living through this. Um, some people say this is exciting. Other people are really scared. Uh, what I would say is don't be scared. Don't be fearful. Um, information uh, and knowledge is power. So the more we know, the more we can be prepared. Uh, but it's certainly an interesting time, whether you're scared or just excited to see, you know, how this all plays out. It's definitely an interesting time. Um, maybe the people that are buying now, uh, because prices will be higher later, maybe they'll be right. Uh, will they be right forever? Or will there be a breaking point? You know, we'll have to see, uh, but it's certainly exciting to see. But what I can say about worrying and stressing about this is worrying doesn't change anything. And that's what I tried to talk about a couple of reports ago. You know, worrying about what's going to happen, um, getting angry about what's going to happen, you know, punching a wall, it's not going to change it, right? You can get mad, you can get upset, you can get anxious until you're blue in the face, but it's not going to change the outcome. What you can do is be calm. Uh, assess, assess the situation and uh, let's look at the news and try to figure this out together and please let me know down in the comments how you're feeling about this is this an exciting time for you or is this a very uh, uh anxiety ridden time for you are you are you scared uh, are you uh, afraid of what's going to happen to you your family your loved ones uh the people around you please let me know down below uh, but for the most part consumers are out spending a uh, part of it is because prices are higher so of course the spending is going to look higher because everything costs more. Retail sales rose on a seasonally adjusted 1.7% in October from September from the U.S. Commerce Department. That's up 0.8% from the previous month. And this article goes on to say employers added 531,000 jobs last month. Of course, we had more than a million new jobless filings in the same month, but they're not mentioning that here in this article. All right, but take a look at this quote. We expect a blockbuster holiday season as people make up for lost time and begin to run down some of the $2.5 trillion in accumulated excess savings since the pandemic began, according to Oxford. So according to Oxford, people have $2.5 trillion in excess savings. But at the same time, we're seeing all kinds of debt increase, credit card debt increasing, mortgage debt increasing. So people have all this extra money but yet they're not paying off their credit cards in full, debt is rising? Who would not pay off their credit card in full each month if they had a bunch of money in the bank? So you're telling me that people are choosing to pay 17, 18, 20 plus percent on a credit card debt by not paying it in full? Right, that's basically economic suicide. So you're, you're telling me, or Oxford is telling us that people have the money but yet they're still getting further in credit card debt. We know credit card debt's increasing, right? So something's not adding up here. Something tells me that a lot of this excess savings that they're talking about is concentrated just with the top 10%. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Why would people have money, but yet carry balances on their credit card and not pay off their credit card in full as we do see credit card debt increasing? Again, 18, 20, 22% APRs on these credit card balances that's economic suicide. So what's the real story? Please let me know what you think. Are, is everybody rich and they're choosing just to go further into debt, even though they have all kinds of money? To me, it doesn't add up. And I think something really, really bad and really, really interesting is, uh, is coming up very, very soon. We'll have to keep an eye on everything for you. All right, another article here. Greed is outpacing fear in world markets, Goldman Sachs CEO says. Right, we talked about this a couple of reports ago. We have traders now, investors that are all in. They have no fear. It's all about greed. As we see prices run up, stock market runs up. Uh, people are jumping in like there's no fear. And it's all about the biggest gains that people are expecting. Uh, where does it end? Well, I'm being very cautious. That's what I'm doing. Please let me know what you think about this. Thanks for being here, everybody. Stay well, stay safe, keep stacking. Bye for now. Peace.